what's up? This is Odulena from Odulena Digital. Welcome to my channel and be sure to subscribe. Today I'm going to talk about a topic which of course a lot of people are divided on and this is cryptocurrencies and blockchain. I'm by no means a specialist into technology of blockchain or know so much about cryptocurrency. Uh, but I know just the basics and uh, in this video I'm going to cover a little bit the history of how we got where we are and why a lot of people think that blockchain technologies and cryptocurrencies are the future, uh, the way humanity is going to do transactions. So if you look in back into history, I'm really keen on history, so I will go back in an ancient, ancient times. When you look at the first written documents and first written texts really in the human history from Mesopotamia, it's not love poems, it's not literature, it's not uh, Bible, it's not religious text, it is transactions. So from the dawn of history, people have been struggling to record and to verify that actually an exchange of property has happened. So you can see some of the earliest documents uh, here in the British Museum in London, you can find many of them are actually the equivalents of today's um, invoices or supermarket receipts where people were exchanging usually all kind of goods like corn, cattle, sometimes even people for other, other commodities like gold, uh, bronze, like wine, honey, and uh, basically the even property of land was done this way. There was no money, so people were exchanging one thing of value for another thing of value. And here there are a lot of problems. As you can see, actually, some of the earliest texts in, in the uh, British museums are complaints of merchants whose uh, uh, transactional goods were not accepted. For example, there is a famous first complaint in the history about a merchant who wanted to buy something with bronze ignots and his bronze was discarded as a subprime uh, quality. So he's written a complaint and basically the reason why people started writing, you can claim, is maybe <laughs> because they wanted to remember transactions and values of goods and exchanges that they've done in the past. And the problem with bartering is, of course, there are many, many problems, but one of them is that you cannot verify. Let's say the transaction is done between two people, but suddenly one of them can claim, if it's not recorded, that the other, the other uh, person never paid them because you cannot verify. And a lot of the goods that people were exchanging were also perishable. So apart from metals, uh, what about cattle, what about corn, what about honey, wine, etc. These could be easily uh, di disappear, uh, rot, and gold and other precious metals could easily be stolen. So there are a lot of problems already existing with bartering. Then that's why actually to solve the biggest one, which was how to verify that the transaction actually happened, banking occurred. And when banking occurred, this started to speed things up. This made it actually possible people to transact uh, across longer distances when uh, international trade, basically international trade is not possible with bartering, traditional bartering, because by the time your goods arrive to that country, the other side might just refuse to pay you back. And again, you, you're missing this uh, verifier. So when it comes to uh, some of these transactions in the history, banking, when it first came in, solved a lot of problems, solved the problems of not verifying that the person who is due to pay has actually the money to pay or the credit to pay. Uh, they were able to kind of uh, attribute a value uh, on money, which uh, they decided and it's universal. So it's not that the value is different in different parts of the country, it's the same. So this made a lot of things easier, but also brought in new difficulties like the banking fees and the transactional fees. That's why banks became extremely wealthy is because of course, for verifying all this work, they had to actually do trans uh, transactional fees. So you have until nowadays bank fees for international transfers, 
you have bank fees for drawing money out of an ATM, you have fees for um, yeah for credit card purchases let's say small shops uh, when when they cannot sometimes charge your card because the transaction is too small and basically it will be eaten out by the transactional fee that they have to pay to whatever company is taking their payments so you can see actually some of the digital uh, payments company became extremely successful recently as contactless cards got introduced because of these transactional fees and of course there is the problem that there is access so not everyone actually is able to open a bank account or get a credit card there are about 2 billion people estimated that don't have any uh, bank account and are unable to open one because they don't have the right documents etc especially if you have traveled and settled into a new country you would know that in the beginning it's a vicious cycle where you cannot open a bank account because you don't have address you don't have address because you cannot open bank account etc so especially with people arriving in new countries or refugees um, or yeah people who just don't cover the criteria of a bank to open an account they are outside of the system so they cannot participate one interesting historical example of how people were able to actually establish a history of transactions was uh, the system of payments on the Yap Islands. The Yap Islands are situated in the Pacific Ocean between Philippines and Papua New Guinea. They are small islands where so-called primitive tribes used to live and still live until nowadays, of course. And they had a um, very interesting system uh, which to some respect uh, is still uh, is still used today or at least remembered well is kind of like the symbol of these uh, Yap Islands is called the Ray Stones. So Ray Stones were huge in some cases massive stones with a hole in the middle. Uh, there is also one in the British Museum which were basically put in different places around the island and people owned them and they could use them to transact but they would not move the stone because often like the biggest stones the most valuable ones were extremely heavy so the how it worked is that the whole society let's say the tribe knew verbally the history of ownership of the stone so before the daughter of the chieftain there was the carpenter who owned the stone before the carpenter there was someone else the sailor etc 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 so people would remember verbally the history of all the transactions and whenever someone uh, who owned the stone wanted to sell it or wanted to basically make a transaction to exchange it for something valuable they would just announce it to the whole tribe and spread the word so now the daughter of the chieftain is buying a boat so everybody knows she owns one big rice stone the big rice stone in the middle of nowhere in the forest but they all know that she owns it they don't have to even see it. they know that it's there and she said that now she has transacted with the carpenter and bought a boat so basically this means that the now the new owner of the rice stone is the carpenter the rice stone doesn't move hands it stays somewhere deep in the forest it's huge massive stone there is even a story about a stone which fell in the water so it was transported by boat and it sunk in the ocean but people continued transacting it because they knew that it exists uh, they knew that it was on somewhere on the bottom of the ocean but doesn't mean that it has disappeared so it still had value so whoever owned it said like okay i'm exchanging my stone which is in the ocean for whatever uh, good they want to, to uh, purchase which is a very interesting concept and this brings me to nowadays so if you want to understand blockchain technology there is a lot of literature but theoretically it is something like a ray stone <laughs> where actually instead of us the tribe memorizing uh, by hand and by our brains the history of transactions all these transactions are recorded digitally and are verified digitally so the people who verify or say the computers which verify the transactions are the so-called miners computers so as a reward for their verification which is a technical process requiring a lot of computational energy i'm not going to go into detail about this 
but basically for verifying the existence of the stone or the blockchain or like the uh, block of information recording these transactions that happened uh, they uh, are rewarded with some bitcoins and the way let's say bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are designed by default is that they are limited amount so the difference between them and the money that we own is that money that we own or have in bank accounts etc in uh, digital money or in paper money uh, they are subject to uh, the central banks and central banks can print more of them so there is unlimited amount of this money which used didn't used to be the case it used to be that money are pegged to uh, amount of gold physical gold which exists but this is long long time ago no longer the case pretty much from the uh, mid 20th 20th century and now most of the money in the world actually function as what they call fiat money so they can always central banks can always print some more if there is necessity and the biggest difference is that with cryptocurrencies they are programmed so it is impossible to create new ones more than actually the creator of the currency has designed to be created from the beginning uh, the money is created from thin air but it is limited you cannot at some point it is projected in the next years that uh, it, it's, it's already becoming very difficult to mine for example bitcoin very soon it's going to be impossible it is going to reach its limits and this means that there will be no more coins to be produced and they will never exist anymore. This is why the creators, uh, the creator, mythical creator of uh, Bitcoin referred to it as the contemporary digital gold. And uh, actually this is kind of the, the brief talk I wanted to give you about the history of money and what exactly is blockchain and why uh, people think that this could be actually the solution for a lot of problems we we have had with uh, the history of transactions in our world let me know in the comments i'm sure that there's people who know much more about the topic the way i describe it is very very basic i hope it makes sense but if you have any other comments or suggestions please write in the comments below i'll be back with a new video next week